welcome, 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 welcome to another broadcast of uh, An Apostolic Outlook. Uh, I'm Reverend Ted Tarr, and uh, we're over here. Uh, I'm, we're so thankful for you invited us into your homes one more time. We're so thankful for all God's many blessings. This opportunity we've got to share with you the Word of God and, and talk about you the Word, the Word of God. Thank God, thank God. Uh, I'm just an old-fashioned one God, tongues-talking, apostolic, Holy Ghost-filled preacher. And I um, uh, don't get any big, I don't have any airs or anything about uh, the turn rev. You know, <laughs> uh, that all that is is a uh, word for preacher, you know. So, uh, uh, Brother Ted, it's fine with me. But anyway, uh, uh, we thank you all for having us in your life. And one more time, and we hope to say something uh encourage you in God and uh, hopefully uh, I'll learn a lot more too about Jesus all right uh, if you ever want to get a hold of us uh, right up there or my email address is rev.tedtar uh, at gmail.com my Facebook address right up there is bitly uh, forward slash rev Ted um, my feed burner is uh, bitly forward slash an apostolic outlook uh, we're on the Geeky Antics uh, website, geekyantics.net. And uh, also, if you guys ever want to, uh, and I know if you're listening to this on YouTube, uh, 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 this, this has already happened, you know. But if you ever want to catch us on a live show, and we do appreciate and we encourage you. If you want to come in with us on live, uh, you can uh, send stuff over on my email, and OB over there will... Uh, uh, Catch it and put it up on the board, and uh, we can talk about it, like, almost live, you know. I can't talk to you voice to voice, but that may be something we'll do down in the future. But if you ever want to catch a live show, it's over on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash, right up there, uh, Geeky Antics, all right? And, uh, guys, we do appreciate your prayers and your concern. We thank God for all the weather we've had, a little bit of reprieve we had yesterday, Got kind of warm up here in Michigan, uh, but uh, hey, don't get feeling too smug. <laughs> it's down single digits again, or will be pretty quick. So, well, it's, that's February in Michigan. So, anyway, oh, we're praying for March. You know, March is next Sunday, so we'll go from there. Uh, this is episode number 26. Boy, Opie just pointed out to me, man, that's that's half a year. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Uh, God's been good to us. This is a... 26 episodes so you keep praying for us and if you guys like i say have, have any comments uh questions uh, uh uh subjects you want me to talk about bible subjects uh, you know i don't get too awful deep uh i'll just try to give you an answer uh i believe what P peter said in first peter 3 15 he said but sanctify the lord god in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man a reason of the hope that is within you with meekness and fear Praise God, I just try to give you an answer, a Bible answer, and it's up to you what you do with it, and, uh, you know, because that's what we're going to be judged out of, is this Word of God, and um, so, uh, praise God, guys. All right, before we get too more involved here, uh, uh, oh, we are also affiliated, I'll be pointing out, with the United Broadcasting Network, oh, praise God, uh, the uh, United Broadcasting Network, they pretty big pretty big uh, network there so hey thanks god thanks guys for uh, uh taking us on we appreciate it okay um anyway uh before we pray uh because i like to open with prayer uh we got a special request and no i'm not going to tell you what it's all about but our old buddy yogi is uh and his family are kind of going through a little crisis here so i want you to pray with me uh for yogi and his family that god will work this situation out uh, when we pray, we always do it in Jesus' name, and, and he is a healer. He is a fixer. He will take care of the problem. So you all pray with me for Yogi. He's a good guy. I've never met him face-to-face, -face, but he's been really, I've talked to him several times, and he seems like a really good guy, and hey, if it wasn't for Yogi and Obi, I wouldn't be here today. So uh, let's pray for Yogi, okay? Lord Jesus, God, in your name, we thank you, oh God. For all your many blessings, we thank you for your pleasant truths and your wonderful love. 
Oh, God, in your most holy name, Jesus, we ask you to, Lord, send your spirit. God, Jesus, let us be in your mind and in your accord. God, I'm asking for your anointing, God, that you help me deliver your word. Oh, God, Lord, you know what men's minds and hearts needs. I don't know, and if I did know, I wouldn't know what to do about it. But you know, God, and I'm asking you to use me, God, to help me. God, say what is needed, hallelujah, to the hungry and the thirsty soul. And, O oh Lord, Lord, I'm asking you to bless Yogi, Lord Jesus, and his family. Bless them and help them, God. I'm asking your divine intervention that you work out this problem, O oh God, and you fix it and heal whatever needs to be healed, God, in the power of your name, Jesus. Amen. 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 All right. Praise God. Yogi, we'll keep praying for you too. Not, not just this one time. And we'll keep praying for you. Now, guys, as you know, last week on the Valentine's weekend, uh, we uh, started a, a subject, and <laughs> I had no idea it was going to get that big, um, uh, about love. You know, love is the, uh, is the um, that's when everybody's thinking about it, you know, on Valentine's Day. And we didn't get near done, but I, I got to thinking after uh, we paused and we're going to continue it this week. Uh, last week, we basically talked about God's love toward us. You know, uh, God so loved the world that he gave. And uh, But this week, I'd like to talk about what our love toward him is all about in the, in the Bible terms. All right? Uh, now, uh, we're going to start over here in 1 John, the fourth chapter. 1 John 4 and 8, and this is just a little continuation of last week's uh, lesson. Uh, 1 John 4 and 8 says, For he that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. God is love. That's one of the things that God is. If you know, if we're going to uh, have the Spirit of God in our lives, uh, we must, uh, must be partakers of His divine nature, uh, according to 1 Peter 1 and 4. And one of the things that God is, is love. Hallelujah. And he has asked us to love. And he don't ask us just to love, you know, without him. He's done, he's given everything we need to truly love him. He loved, the Bible said, um, I think it's Second Corinthians, uh, the fifth chapter. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, while we were yet enemies, no, that's Romans, the fifth chapter. I'm sorry, Romans, the fifth chapter. While we were yet enemies, Christ died for the ungodly. So he didn't just ask us to love and just because, you know, we should. He loved us first, and he gave, and he proved his love for us. Hallelujah. And he has given us the ability to receive his spirit. That's what the gift of the Holy Ghost is about. It is the spirit of God then you'll know you got the Holy Ghost because you'll speak in tongues. It's a, You can check that out in the book of Acts. It's the fifth chapter, the fifth book in the New Testament. Excuse me. <clears throat> Preach this morning. <laughs> about shot my throat. Um, and uh, you want to read about in, uh, when they got the Holy Ghost, sign they could tell they got the Holy Ghost, well, they heard them speak in tongues. That's Acts the second chapter, Acts the tenth chapter, Acts the nineteenth chapter. And um, it, it's, it's a sign, hallelujah, for to you that you know it's the one uniform sign that everybody gets the Holy Ghost. Uh, people may demonstrate it in different ways. Uh, some people will shout and flop and just go all over the place. You know, that's, <laughs> that's the reason uh, back in the early days uh, they used to call us holy rollers because people would just roll and flip and shout and run and and run all across the back of the church benches, you know, just to have a time. Uh, some people aren't like that. Some people are more quiet, and they'll just cry because they feel the presence of the Almighty God. Some people will uh, grin ear to ear when they see God moving and they feel Him. I mean, I, I think I'm more in that vein. I, I'm grinning and laughing, and I'm just watching Him because I, not that I think people are funny, just that I'm enjoying seeing the manifestations of God. But so it's different. But everybody that gets a Holy Ghost will have this one constant, this one uniform sign that you have the Holy Ghost is that you will speak in other languages. Now, the best way to describe that would be uh, uh, 
one time we, I have the story of this missionary who went down in uh, uh, the jungles of South America. You know, everybody down there speaks either a, a Spanish or a, a, a derivative of a, you know, the native language down there. And they, he went down there preaching to them about Jesus. And one little girl uh, got the Holy Ghost. And they, she, had, they'd probably never even seen a white man before, you know. And uh, they went, they went down there, and uh, she received the Holy Ghost in perfect English, because these people were from America, and they, that's what this language they taught. They heard her speak, "Oh, hallelujah, Jesus! Thank you, Jesus! I love you! Thank you! Thank you, Jesus!" In perfect English. All right. Now, when she got, came back to herself, and and out of the, you know, away from the the raptures of of God, it just filled her. She didn't know a bit of English. See, it was not a language that she knew. And that's what speaking in tongues is all about. It's a language that you don't know, but it's a manifestation of God, hallelujah, in your life. And it's a witness that God has taken control of your tongue. Remember the James we talked about a few weeks back? In James, the fourth, uh, third chapter, the tongue is an unruly member no man can tame. All right. That's the reason God chose to take control of the tongue when you got the, his spirit. All right. Now, uh, we're going to go over, uh, like I say, pick up where we left off last week over in Mark. Uh, St. Mark, the 12th chapter. Uh, the book of St. Mark, uh, second book in the New Testament. And talk about... Uh, our love toward God, all right? Uh, Mark 12 and verse 28. Now this is, uh, And one of the scri scribes came, and having heard them reasoning together, perceived that he had answered them well. He's talking about Jesus. And asked him, Which is the first commandment of all? Jesus answered him, The first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. So you see, that's what, we have that obligation. God loved us so much, and he asked us to love. Not only him, he said, Thou must love lo, Lord thy God with all thy heart. Look at that little word. Them little words are important. He didn't say most of your heart. He didn't say a good part of your heart. He, he said all your heart. In other words, everything else. You're, and he didn't say you couldn't love anything else. Of course you can. We love family. We love things we do. We love places we go. But he wants your love for God to be so, <coughs> excuse me, so powerful and so much predominance in your life that everything else pales in perspective. Everything else pales in comparison love god another little point i'd like to make before we get too far along uh, in verse 29 hero israel the lord our god is one lord that's the reason you see uh jesus told the woman at the well in the fourth chapter of john salvation is of the jews salvation came through Hallelujah, I, the Jews on the day of Pentecost. That's when uh, uh, J St. John, the first chapter, I believe it's the 11th verse, tells us that he came unto his own, but his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Jesus came to the Jew first, because that was, the Bible said in, in uh, I believe in Amos, the only family that God knew. They were God's people. But through Jesus, God has opened the doors to us Gentiles. Everybody that's not a Jew is a Gentile. And he wants us to worship him. And we must always remember, God is one. God is one. 
I'm sorry, guys, and I don't mean to offend anybody, and I don't need to step on any toes, but that whole Trinitarian um, outlook and thing is a, is a uh, copulation of a Greek and Roman theology that came out of Rome in the second and third chapter. God is one. You can look all through the Bible, through Isaiah, Isaiah 43 and, and, uh, and the 44th chapter says explicitly many, many, many times, God is one and there's none beside him. God is, you know, it's, that's all the main, one of the main things, the whole Bible. So when you remember that, you worship him as God. And the wonderful thing about this apostolic way is, is we know his name. His name is Jesus. That's the name. See, God in the Old Testament has always had many, many names that he has used, and they've always described his uh, character. There was uh, ten different Jehovian titles in the Old Testament. Jehovah, Shalom. Uh, the word Jehovah means uh, a covenant, a pact, a, 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 a promise that he would keep. And Jehovah Shalom is a uh, Jehovah, a God who will keep peace with you. Uh, Jehovah Rofika means uh, 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 God will be our shepherd. Jehovah uh, Mekadishnim means uh, God will be our uh, sanctifier. See, there's 10 different ones. And uh, there were all names of God. Elohim was one of the names of God, denoting his majesty and multiplicity of anything you needed to be done. He would do it, all right? But all them Old Testament names told us what God is. He's a covenant. He's master. He's Lord. He's God. He's creator. He's everything you need. Jesus says who God is. Hallelujah. And that's the access that we have to the throne of glory. That's why the Bible so insists that everything we do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Obi. Yeah, that, uh, he gave us a... Uh, Jehovah Sidkenu is uh, God our righteousness. Um, uh, Elohim is a, a reference for to mean God's power and might. Uh, Adonai means Lord. Jehovah Yahweh is uh, a reference to God who will always divide uh, 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 eternal salvation, who will, who will provide it. Um, yeah, there's a whole bunch of them. There's a whole bunch of them. Oh, Lord, have mercy. There's a whole <laughs> more than you want me to read now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Obi's over there got a, yeah, he, he's not that smart. He just got access to everything that's in the internet and all the computer stuff. So if you ever want something, he can probably send you a list. But um, anyway, but God wanted us to love him with all. First realize he is one and he wants you to love him. Him with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength. All is just all, all right? All. Now, um, I heard a wise old preacher one time tell us that uh, all your heart means to do with all your emotion. Your heart is usually talked about as your emotional center of you. So everything that makes you happy. Make it be God. I mean, you, like I say, you can have joy. You can be happy with other stuff. But make the one thing that your happiness revolves around is God. With all your heart, your emotions. Hallelujah. All your soul. Your soul is your ego. Don't let stupid pride or arrogance or, or, or lust or, or stuff like that get in your way with the love of God. That will separate you from God. If you're pride, if you think you're somebody... I mean, you will start, it, it almost turns into idol worship or covetousness because you think you're somebody. Remember who is all in all. Love God with all. Hallelujah. He asked us to do that. All your mind, your intellect. You know, the Bible said in one of the greatest scriptures I can ever think of, um, uh, oh, I, I got to get it for you. This, this is coming out of the blue, Obi. So uh, we're in uh, Romans the first chapter, Romans, the first chapter, verse, um, I lost it, I lost it, I lost it, oh well, I, guys, I'm going to have to come back to that, <laughs> that's, that's Ted, I drift, okay, I can't remember, 
So, anyways, love God, um, uh, and 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 put Him first, and He and and, and don't let your mind, don't let your mind uh, get you uh, distracted. Don't get things uh, you you're trying to figure out. Um, oh man, it's right. At, I, I gotta go somewhere else, and then I'll come back to this. Okay, it'll come back to me. And with all thy strength. You know, it's one thing you love God in your heart and your mind, but your strength means your physical being. Love Him. Make this old body do what it's supposed to do. Make this old yourself love Him and serve Him and um, uh, uh, be what He wants you to be. Hallelujah. Now, He also told us that we're not only supposed to love Him, but you look in verse 31, the second commandment thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself how much do you love yourself okay i don't know anybody you, you be honest with me you get some people say i don't much care for me that's because you know yourself too good but when it comes right down to you wouldn't purposely you know hurt yourself you love yourself you you love all right god asked us to love our brother our neighbor as ourself he gave us a fine example. One time a, a scribe asked him, who is my brother? And uh, God, uh, Jesus gave us a, an example of the Good Samaritan. I believe that's in um, <coughs> Luke, uh, the 15th or 16th chapter, the 10th chapter, 16th chapter, 16th chapter of Luke. And I'll just tell you, we're not going to go there. You can check it out for yourself. Uh, he uh, 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 said uh, one time there was a man went down from Jerusalem and as he's on his way down from Jerusalem on his way to Jericho that's another city about oh, a few miles away uh, he fell among thieves and the thieves beat him and robbed him and the Bible said they left him on the side of the road half dead and as he was laying there bleeding, you know, you can see he's just all mangled, messed up self, you know. Um, there came a priest, and as he's walking by, somebody who should have been trying to do what God wanted him to do. And this priest walked by, and when he saw that man all messed up and just mangled uh, uh, on the side of the road, he just, he went on the other side of the road and went on past him. He said, I don't want to get involved, you know put myself in danger he had no idea where the robbers were maybe didn't want to get bloody i don't know and so he went on by next came a levite and that levite uh which is actually somebody that was like a deacon or somebody that worked in the church somebody who did uh, uh the, the 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 priest was a man that handled the word of god the levites were somebody that took care of all the needs that were around the church okay and he saw the man bleeding and mangled up and messed up on the side of the road. He went on the other side of the road and went up, wouldn't even help him. Next came a Samaritan. Now you got to understand, uh, when the Israel was taken away captive by Babylon uh, back in the Old Testament, around 600 B.C., when they started letting some of them come back, and uh, they would come and they were intermarried with the people who were not Israelites. And they were a race and over 600 years, you get quite a few family members. And uh, they would start to uh, intermarry and they would start to, um, uh, uh, it developed a whole a people. And uh, so they, uh, they came back and, um, Hey, I got that scripture <laughs> I was thinking about. Anyway, uh, they, they came back and uh, uh, they were inter intermingled. They weren't pure Jews because the Jews didn't think anybody but Jews was right, you know. And so, but this, uh, so they had no, they, the Jewish people considered the Samaritans dogs. They weren't even talked to them. They wouldn't be associated with them, okay. This Samaritan who came back and, uh, uh, came along and stopped and immediately by compassion he went and he helped that guy he picked him up he uh took care of his wounds the bible said the bible said he he poured in oil and wine uh, uh they used the wine it was real alcohol wine they, they would pour that alcohol in the guy's wounds alcohol would sterilize the germs and help the healing process the oil he poured in was probably like an olive oil 
and that olive oil would cover up them open wounds and so uh, wouldn't get in any more infection in, okay? So that's taking care of a guy all he can. Then he bound up, he bound, covered up his wounds, put him on his own horse or mule, I can't remember what it was, and brought him to an inn, brought him to a place and paid for the guy's uh, place to rest So and told the innkeeper, here are two pence, or here's enough money to take care of this man. And when I come back through, if I owe you anything more, if he owes you anything more, I'll take care of it. That is what Jesus said is your neighbor. That's how we're supposed to take care of one another. And uh, Obi's got it put up there, Luke, the 10th chapter, verses 25 through 37. Okay, so that's what it's talking about. Hey, now I got something... Uh, let's go back to what we're talking about. Love the Lord God, God, with all thy mind. This is the scripture. I couldn't think of where it was. It's over in 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, and the 21st verse. 1 Corinthians 1 and 21 tells us, For after that, the, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. <laughs> I can quote that all day long until I tried to pull it up right then. Then I just drew a blank. But after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by, not, by wisdom knew not God. And I'm not saying anything bad about higher education or learning. Nah, there's nothing wrong about that at all. There, I know there are some preachers that preach against, you know, don't college, you know. But no, no, there's nothing. I mean, man, the more you can learn, the better off you are. You know, the more able you are to get a good job and more understanding. Just be careful by your higher. Uh, it seems like people who get so smart and, and so figuring out things that they start to figure out God. God is past understanding. We ain't going to figure out God because God don't work the same way our mind works. If you're going to understand God, you got to have a spiritual mind. you got to have a mind that will... Because God is spirit, according to uh, St. John 4.24. And because he is spirit, we must worship him. We must understand him in spirit and in truth. All right? So praise God. Love the Lord thy God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. All right? So now we... um. Talk about loving God. Now, now, now I want to talk about another little aspect of how we're supposed to love. God not only wants us to love him, but he wants us to love one another. Over in the book of John, St. John, that's the fourth book in the New Testament. And St. John, the 13th chapter. St. John 13 and 34. St. John 13 and 34. A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another. As I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. Remember, this is Jesus talking. This is our Lord and Savior. He has given us a direct commandment that we have to love one another. Matter of fact, that's how you're going to know that we are, that you are a Christian. Praise God. I mean, you speak in tongues all day, you get the Holy Ghost, but, and, and, and that's right, and that's essential, but you got to love one another. Love, remember, uh, we, when we started, 1 John 4 and 8, God is love. And if we want to be partakers of God and with God, we not only really love Him, we love one another. That's confirmed to us over here in St. John, the 15th chapter. St. John 15 and starting in 10. We got 2 or 3. We're going to go verse 10 and verse 12. And verse 17, all in the 10th chapter of St. John. 10 and 12 and 17. Verse 10, If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide my love, even as ye have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. This is my commandment, that ye love one another 
as I have loved you. Verse 17, these things I command you that ye love one another. Man, I tell you guys, that is so important. That is so essential. If you want to be a Christian, I'm talking about a Bible Christian. I'm not talking about them people who say, yeah, I'm part of the Christian fellowship. And, you know, I, I go to church. Well, I, I was at church, I think, uh, uh, last Easter, I believe. And uh, I'm planning on going Christmas, you know. No, I'm not talking about that. Guys go to church every now and then. I'm talking about somebody who not only goes, and I'm not saying anything bad about going to church. Yes, it's good because we need fellowship one with another. But you got to be a Christian in here, not just out here, but in here. You got to be a Christian in your heart. You got to be a Christian in your mind. You got to be a Christian. What you are has to be a Christian. Love. The Bible said the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That, that, that's God's kingdom. If you want it, that's that way you'll be righteous. You'll be, have integrity. Have not somebody that's going to lie through your teeth every time you get a chance, or, or you're going to have a chance to manipulate somebody, or stab somebody in the back, or step on somebody's neck, but somebody who will do the right thing and be someone of integrity righteousness and joy this holy ghost we have is the greatest thing that you could ever imagine hallelujah it gives you joy even when the whole world is coming down on you and it seems like nobody loves you you have a peace and a joy that comes from god that will help you through every situations that joy from god will give you rest and help you be at peace and if you're at peace with yourself you'll be at peace with others and righteousness, peace, and joy, hallelujah, in the Holy Ghost. Like I say, guys, you can't do this without the Holy Ghost. You need the Holy Ghost. That's why I push it all the time. That's why every broadcast we're talking about get baptized in Jesus' name. It's essential. In Jesus' name, it's essential. In Jesus' name, it is essential. The name, if you don't get baptized in Jesus' name, if you get baptized in some other way, in, even in the titles Father, Son, the Holy Ghost, the name is not spoken. That's something that the uh, uh, Greco-Roman church invented in the second and third uh, uh, centuries. And when they, the, the, they was developing the concept of the Trinity. The name Jesus is is what puts away your sins. The name Jesus is the power of God that will make you clean within. Hallelujah. And allows you to be born again, according to uh, John, the third chapter and the fifth verse. And then God, when he cleans you up, he don't leave you on your own. He don't leave you and say, okay, Jimmy, uh, I took away your sins. Do the best you can. Nah. God loves you too much for that. Praise God. <clears throat> he lets you have the right and the privilege and the opportunity to receive his spirit. It's a free gift. Praise God. When you repent, uh, according to Acts 2.38, and you are baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, Peter told us explicitly that you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. It's a free gift. All you got to do is receive it. And like I say, when you get it, you'll know you got it because you'll be speaking in tongues. Gravy, man. Gravy. It's real simple because the Bible is very simple. You just let it speak for itself and it will. All right. Now, we're going on over here to uh, 1 John. And this is like 60 years later. So you don't think that, um, well, Jesus said it, but none of the church ever did it. This is a first John, way back in the back of the book. It's written about 90 A.D., uh, so it's about 60 years later. And in first John, the second chapter and the seventh verse, uh, Apostle John wrote to us, Brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment which ye had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which ye have heard from the beginning. Well, praise God, you read in, in 1 John, 
that uh, this stuff that he's writing and all you all, like I say, more uh, you see in this, the paper there in the uh, the script that it's we're basically talking in First John the third and the fourth chapter. Everything John is talking about. Love God, love your brother, love God, love your brother, love God, love your brother. Because that is so important. And he don't ask us to, you were, now we're over here in First John, the third chapter, and in the 18th verse, First John 3, 18, John tells us, My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth he said don't just talk a good talk and you know thanks i love i love everybody and then you go home and 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 rip them off you don't rip off and you don't hurt and you don't try to spiritually kill people that you love all right you try to do them right and that's what god wants us to do do our brother right hallelujah Hallelujah. And he said he'd give us everything we need. We said we would give us everything we need in order to do that. But he asked us to do that. He asked us to love. Hallelujah. Not just in word, not just in tongue, but in deed. And uh, let our actions speak for us. What's that uh, the old saying? A picture is worth a thousand words. You know, you can say it all day long, but if somebody sees you do it, and you go forth with what you say with your life. Praise God. That says it a lot more. And that proves it, that it's true. Okay, uh, we're going over here to uh, 1 John, the third chapter, and the 16th verse. Here's a little thing. Uh, I think it's kind of neat. And let people uh, see if you want to understand the love of God. Uh, well, you, we won't never understand totally God's love and uh, how he is, but this will give you a little insight. First John three sixteen. Remember, we're in First John. That's toward the back of the book here. First John three sixteen. Hereby perceive we the love of God, because He laid down His life for us. We ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Now, look at this word perceive. Perceive means to have understanding, to have insight, to not just see but to really see to really understand to really have an understanding of what it's about hereby perceive we the love of god because he laid down his life for us we ought to lay down our lives for the brother now this not talking about looking for somebody and you see somebody about to shoot somebody and step out and catch a bullet no i didn't or or throw somebody in or throw yourself in front of a car and, and give your life it's not necessarily talking about that but uh we ought to lay down our lives or um our our own will our own way our own if i lay down ted and try to help obi Put Obi first. Put Obi's missus first. You know, beautiful, wonderful Missy. Praise God. It, it, it's just, that's where you get a perception, a little bit of why, how God feels about you. You lay down your life or your wants, your needs, your desires, and put them first. Praise God. You understand a little bit more about Jesus. All right. Um. 1 John, the third chapter, and the 23rd verse. Like I say, you guys can check these all out. Um, right up there, right there. Which way is it, Obi? Where's them scriptures at? Over there. Okay, they're right over there. Um, I get backwards. Over there. And this is the command, is his commandment. 1 John 3, 23. That we should believe on the, his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us commandment. You know, that, that pretty much sums it up. We believe on Jesus. Now, we all know we covered that, what believing on the Lord Jesus Christ is all about. We believe on him. We will worship him as our God. We will do what he says. We will try to follow him as he 
uh, lived and what he says and what he do. And we'll be born again. We'll receive his spirit. We'll, we'll try to be a Christian. That's what Christian's about. You know, that's why they in Acts uh, 11, 26, the Bible said they were first called Christians at Antioch. Uh, why were they first called Christians? Because they went around acting and living and um, trying to fashion their lives after the example of our Master and Savior, Jesus Christ. All right. Um, we'll go on here to the fourth chapter of 1 John. 1 John 4 and 18. This is one thing that love will help you do. Some people say, I'm, nah, I'm too timid to love one another. Praise God. 1 John 4 and 18. Uh, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. This gives us all something to shoot for. You know, I'm, I'm about as timid of a guy as <laughs> any one of you. I was, man, I was really bad when I was a kid. And uh, God... Yeah, I'm 60 years old, so I'm better than I used to be. But it's a lot of times I back down in situations because I'm not real brazen about a lot of stuff. That's just who I am. But perfect love casteth out fear. I don't fear like I used to. I still sometimes, if I don't, if I'm not really prayed up and, you know, the Holy Ghost real strong in me, I'll, you know, I'm pretty spooked about getting involved. As a matter of fact, I would never have done this broadcast. I would have never have, have launched out in this thing myself, except Obi uh, talked me into it, and I got to praying about it and asking God's will, and he he said, yeah, I mean, he kind of let me feel this was his will, and this is an outreach that he would use to, to help somebody, and, and you know, that's what it's all about, man. I mean, on my heart's desire and prayer is that on Judgment Day, I can hear somebody testify, he said, that broadcast that Brother Tar." Uh, he let me see you closer and because I could see and I, I he helped me get introduced to Jesus and because he did I'm here today I mean hallelujah that's what it's all about guys that's what it's all about and that's the only reason I'm here and I told God I said okay if you want me there I'll go through that door and that's that's why I'm here. I mean, I'm just trying to do what God wants me to do. I don't know who's listening to this broadcast. I don't know uh, if anybody, and I know they're sitting there in the YouTube library, and maybe it might be after I'm dead. People, somebody might stumble across this thing and get a closer look at Jesus and realize, wow, he is a wonderful God. And it's not Ted. It's not me. I mean, I we all know it's me, man. I'm I stumble and stutter, and I'm more scrambled and confused than <laughs> most people. But it, it's it's all about Jesus, guys. It's all about Jesus, and He wants us to not only love Him and receive His love. He wants us to love one another. Oh, next verse up in First John, the fourth chapter, and the seventeenth verse. This is pretty good stuff here. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. Remember a few weeks back, I talked about there's going to be a judgment day. There's going to be a time where we'll all have to answer and, and give an account for the things done in this body. Well, I'll tell you, if you have love, and you love God, and you love one another on Judgment Day, praise God, that's going to be manifested, and you're going to have uh, boldness, the Bible said here, that we may have boldness in the Day of Judgment. Praise God, because we are loved, and because that God loves us, we're going to be able to look at Him and hear Him say, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, uh, I got a little uh, a test here for you. I got a little test here for you. And this, uh, see if uh, you can pass this test. Over in 1 John here, the 4th chapter and the 20th verse. If a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he is a liar. 
For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? Now be honest with me, and let's talk to one another here a second. Can you pass this test? It's easy to say, I love God. But have you got bitter envying and strife and malice in your heart toward your brother? Toward the people that, you know, I'm not talking about your name is Randolph and their name is Ryan. I'm not talking about blood brother. I'm talking about our neighbor. Hallelujah. Do you have malice and strife and bitter envying in your heart? Hallelujah. The Bible said if you have that, no matter how much you say, I love God, buddy, I'm sorry to tell you, right here in black and white in the word of God, the book said you're a liar. And the only one you're deceiving, because you ain't really deceiving nobody except maybe yourself. You know, everybody that looks at you and say, that man is a hypocrite. That woman is, you know, putting on airs, you know. No, 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 no. I'm to ask you to be honest. There's those there's just two beings that you cannot fool. I mean you can wear the right clothes and you can smile the right smile and you can man put on a you know I love and I'm doing this for the poor and I'm I'm doing this for building churches and all that. But there are two that you will never fool. You never fool God because he's the eternal God and he knows all things. And the other one you will never fool is you. Hallelujah. You'll never fool you. You'll know in your heart of hearts what you're really like inside. You know. I mean, you can fool your wife. You can fool your husband. You can fool mama. You can fool daddy. You can fool the little kids running around on the ground. You can fool the president of the United States. But you'll never fool you. Be honest. Be honest with God. Be honest with yourself. Love God. Love your brother. Love and allow the love of God to move in you and to be what you want to be and how you want to be. Because he'll help you. You don't have to do it by yourself. That's the whole thing about God. You don't have to do it by yourself. Just hallelujah. Fall at his knees. Ask him to help you. Hey guys, I've done I do it all the time. I say, Jesus, I'm short. I need some help. I need to come up. I need you to help me. That's the one I mean, <laughs> I made one promise to God when I came to him. I mean, I had been baptized in uh, uh June 30, 1968. I got the Holy Ghost tonight and I was baptized in Jesus' name. Well, I was a fourteen year old kid, you know. And Fourteen, no matter how much you teenagers think you know everything, <laughs> buddy, you don't know nothing. But um, uh, just only what you think you know. I was fourteen year old kid, and I went to church for about a year and a half. Or so after that, but then I, nah, nah, the things out there, the guys that were smoking, the guys that were uh get involved with you know secular activities and this and that, and I want to. So I just kind of all away from God, which you can do. The Bible, Jesus said, no man can pluck you out of my hand, but it never said nothing about you couldn't walk out. And I I just didn't want to serve God anymore. So I I uh, went and chased that stuff in the, in the school, you know, over the last couple of years of my school. Well, there were other things in the school. Back in the uh, 70, and you know, even in a little old town called Allendale, Michigan, <laughs> there was drugs, you know, and I got into them because, I, like I say, I was so timid and so in, introverted that um, I couldn't hardly talk to anybody. And so I got into the drug culture, you know, I, I doing uh, the pot, and, uh, which I guess is not near as big a deal today as it was back then. Um, back in that time, if a guy got caught with a roach, I know one guy who got caught with one joint and served 10 years in prison, you know, different culture. And uh, but I got into harder stuff too. I got into LSD, you know, the acids and, uh, and the mescalines and, and 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 different things, you know. And after about four years of that, I got into it about fifteen. When I was about nineteen, I had by the time 
I had done some severe damage. I had hurt myself, frankly. I couldn't hold a sentence. I couldn't. I was so drifty. I was so scattered. I was so confused. I, I was just, instead of helping me get out of myself, I was deeper into myself. And I'd start a conversation with somebody, and then about halfway through or less than that, i just kind of wander away, finish the conversation in my own mind, and forget even they were there. I mean, it got really bad. I I call that, I think they call that burnt brain cells. <laughs> but, um, uh, but you know, and, and when I came back to God, and God just never quit pulling me, because that's the love of God. I mean, he, he kept pulling me. He said, come on home, come on home. He wanted me to, to use me. He wanted to to help me he you know i was just on disaster i mean if i'd have kept that up man i'd been one of them guys you see in the walking up the streets going you know um one of them old homeless guys so burned out and messed up can't do nothing but god brought me home and he helped me and as he was drawing me i went to church that day and 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 god was really pulling on me and i, I didn't think because i was so confused and so scattered and so burnt out i didn't think there was any way i could ever serve him and i made one promise to god i said god if you help me i'll try my promise i ever made and you know the wonderful thing he never quits helping me and as long as i keep trying in my own limited capacity and look at me now i can hold a conversation yay well kind of squirrel <laughs> um but uh i'm still drifty but i think that's a guy thing more than damaged brain cells and uh but uh you know it's just god is just good and he's done a lot and he, he's blessed me in a lot of ways and helped me to remember a lot of his word but that's still i don't know and if y'all look at me, you can see I'm kind of a confused mess sometimes, but hey, I'm a lot better than I was. I mean, I've come a long way from what I was. And that's the kind of love that God will do. And he asks us to love one another. He asks us to love him and love one another. If you want to be a true Christian, can you pass this test? No matter how much you say you love God, if you hate your brother, you ain't right. You need to get your heart right. All right? We got another scripture here in 1 John, the 4th chapter, and the 21st verse. And this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God love his brother also. That's pretty much as plain and simple and forthright and outright as any one of us could ask. He wants us to love. That's the mark of a Christian. That's what it's all about in this Christian walk. Now, I got one more. We're almost out of time here, guys. But uh, over here in Romans, the 13th chapter, we're going to Romans 13, verse 8. This is the Apostle Paul writing this. And he says, Oh, no man anything but to love one another. It's so important. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. Praise God. Now, you notice that I talk a lot about, you know, uh, we don't keep the Sabbath. and and uh, But, you know, there's just a couple of things at the Old Testament law we don't keep because the Sabbath was given to Israel through their generations. It was plainly given. Jesus didn't keep the Sabbath the way that um, uh, the Pharisees and Sadducees, he was constantly in trouble with them. And they constantly were trying to kill him because he did not keep their way of doing things. Jesus didn't come to condemn the law or the prophets, as he told us in um, uh, uh, John. But he, he came to fulfill. Praise God. I think it was in Mark, the fifth uh, chapter. He did not come to uh, destroy the law and the prophets. Uh, Mark, uh, Matthew 5, 17, I believe. He came to fulfill. He fulfilled the law. The law was fulfilled in Jesus. And love one another. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. See, so you see a lot of stuff that in the Old Testament, in the Ten Commandments, we do do. And if it's for us, praise God, amen. If it's in the Word of God, amen. Run with it, all right? Um, and if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this, namely, Thou shalt love thy neighbor 
as thyself. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Praise God. If you want to fulfill everything God wants for you, love. Love God. Love one another. Praise God, because that's what God wants us to be. If you want to be a Christian, if you want to be a New Testament Christian, love. Obey him, serve him, amen, and he will help you. All right, all right. I got a little poem here given me uh, several years ago, and uh, it's called My Want. My Want. I want to go to heaven and get out of here. To be free from old sinful flesh with no more burden or fear. It's not that I want to die or have someone else end it all. I just want to go home with Jesus and be with him for eternity's call. The saints of God are grand. Oh, they are such a glorious family. The love and compassion they show is always a joy and rest for me. But I want to go to heaven and shout around the master's throne. This world is only a placement temporary. Eternity with Jesus can be my only eternal home. Praise God. And I think that's what every Christian, and that's the right that God has given you, is the ability to not fear death, not fear eternity. When you are right with God down here, you have no fear when you close your eyes, when you breathe that last breath. There's no fear. The Bible says that, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? In 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter there. Praise God. We're no longer subject to the terror of death. All death becomes to us is a doorway is a threshold, <laughs> is a place that we can just step across into the glorious liberty of eternity with God. God loves you. God wants to help you. Be a Christian. Are you baptized in Jesus' name? Do you have the Holy Ghost? Are you living for Him? He loves you. He will help you if you ask Him. You try. He'll help you. He'll teach you more than you can ever imagine. A scripture I just learned here this this week, and I, I, it means so much to me, and I'm quoting it all the time, is that is in Job, the 34th chapter and the 32nd verse. Job is the book right before Psalms there in the Old Testament. It said, uh, That which I see not, teach thou me. If I have done iniquity, I will do no more. That's an honest, heartfelt prayer. Of what every one of us should see that which I see not talking uh, to God if I don't see I'm doing wrong God teach me if I don't know the right way to go God show me hallelujah and he will he loves you so much he will help you and all he asks is love him and the wonderful thing about Jesus is you don't have to manufacture love by yourself it's like what the sun is. The sun generates a heat. But when you look at the nighttime sky and that big old moon up there, that big old glorious full moon shining in the sky, is that moon generating that light? No. That moon is a dark, cold, dead rock. All that, all that glorious moon that you see shining is a reflection from the sun on the other side of the earth. And that's what God wants us to do, reflect his glory. He wants us to be like the moon, to him be in the sun. He will give you all the love you need. He will give you all the joy you need. He will give you all the compassion and long-suffering and forbearance and understanding you need. Just allow him to radiate it on you and reflect it back. Praise God. That's what Jesus was talking about in Matthew the 5th chapter and the 16th verse. Matthew 5, 16. He said, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. Guys, we want to thank you one more time 
for being with us. We want to thank you for uh, joining us. If you have any questions or comments, my email uh, right up there is uh, rev.tedtar at gmail.com. My Facebook address is uh, bit uh, dot ly forward slash rev ted tar my uh, feed burner is uh, uh, bit dot ly forward slash an apostolic outlook and uh, you look at the up there it's all the capitals you, the an apostolic and outlook are all capitals yes sir ah so we are going to be live somewhere else. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, so uh, we're having some trouble with uh, uh, some people. I guess the devil is kind of involved in wanting to, to shut us down here a little bit. So we'll be live uh, somewhere else. But will you be able to see us on, hear us on YouTube? Uh, we are going to be sending okay. it to YouTube okay. every okay. single week. Okay. Uh, the same spot, but the live show is not okay. on Twitch. Okay, okay, guys. Uh, like I say, uh, starting next week, we won't be able. You won't be able to catch me. So disregard that Twitch address I gave you a little earlier. But we will be on YouTube. We'll continue to uh, put our shows up on YouTube, and we'll be on the air as long as uh, God makes a way for us. And uh, praise God. You pray for us. And remember, keep Yogi in your prayer. Hallelujah. That God would work this situation out. All right, guys. Well, we're gonna close with our uh, favorite scripture here. In Psalms, the 19th chapter and the 14th verse. Psalms 19, 14. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. I hope to see you real soon, guys. Be in contact. Amen. If you have any questions, comments, anything you want to say, you want me to just give you a shout out. Let me know. I'll be glad to do it. I love you guys. And uh, you pray for me in Jesus' name. Bye now.